MBBS was such a valued degree. Deal with most of the patients from obstetric cases to surgical cases to medical cases to pediatric cases. Our today's generation of doctors are not confident clinicians right from the MBBS with so much of technology, YouTube, apps and all these resources available how to be this confident clinician during the final MBBS itself. So hi guys, I'm Dr. Patil and I'm your faculty for medicine and today I'm here to talk about a very very important topic. 10 years back, MBBS was such a valued degree. 20 years back, it was such a valid degree. Because 20 years back, when I was a kid, I was never taken to a pediatrician when I fell ill. I was always taken to a GP, an MBBS doctor, who was confident enough to deal with most of the patients from obstetric cases to surgical cases to medical cases to pediatric cases. Referrals were not so common. Today, if you go to your medical own medical college and see, most patients have cross referrals. Now, I do agree that there is a medical legal need for us to have cross references, but even then, why our today's generation of doctors are not confident clinicians right from the MBBS, which was possible 20 years ago? 20 years ago, the professors in the medical schools were the only source of learning. Even then, Doctors came out confident with MBBS degree itself and today with so much of technology, YouTube, apps and all these resources available still most of us after MBBS are not confident enough to deal with our patients and we have started seeing MBBS as just a stepping stone or a qualifier to appear for NEET PG and then we come out as clinicians only when we have completed PG and I am pretty sure that in next 10 years that's also going to change. You are not going to be confident clinicians even after completing the postgraduate degree. You will become a confident clinician maybe after you complete a super specialty degree, which is so, so unfortunate. But today, let's commit to change this once for all. Let's be confident clinicians. Let's learn how to be this confident clinician during the final MBBS itself so that once we enter into internship, we know our fundamentals. We know our basics and we can deal with at least common basic cases. And to be able to be a confident clinician, what we need to do. Okay, so let me tell you so that you become a confident clinician right from your MBBS and you don't have to rely on your MD, DNB, or MS degree to be a confident clinician, right? The first suggestion. Read, repeat, apply. Read, repeat, apply. Read, revise, and whenever you encounter a patient, try to apply whatever you know, right? Because it's just a mind game that I'm saying. Apply, of course, not to patients. You're doing it in your mind. You may go wrong, right? Utter your wrong utterances in front of the teachers, in front of your friends, colleagues. Don't feel any hesitation to speak out. If one of your teacher ridicules you, ignore him. Ignore him. He may be having issues with himself in his practice. Many times the frustration is brought to the hospitals. Just ignore it. But keep talking. Sir, I feel this is not uh, mitral stenosis, sir, because I heard this murmur, sir. Utter it. If the examiner says, no, 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 I heard this murmur. But you learned something there. Maybe you, you still need to work on your skills. But keep talking. Keep applying. That is the first one. And when I said read, right, the second suggestion is read from the right source. And when I say right source, there are sources which are helping you to deal with MCQs, apps, QBanks, MCQ books. That's for your neat PG. But in the final MBBS, don't be a neat PG warrior because neat PG exam is also changing so drastically that. It's becoming more and more clinically oriented, a lot of application based, based MCQs and those are not easily cracked by just cramming the information. Right? Just, just make sure that final MBBS is taken as final MBBS and you should have at least one good reading source apart from your MCQ source. Right? That is textbooks. Textbooks are the right sources and when it comes to the medicine, right? I would say as a final prof student, I would recommend you to read Davidson's or API textbook of medicine. 
API textbook of medicine. I wouldn't recommend Harrison. I know I am doing this read Harrison series and it's quite popular. If you want to follow Harrison, then maybe you can follow the series where I try to concise the essence of each topic. But if you sit for reading, each topic will take enormous amount of time and it's not a great investment for an MBBS student. For a medicine PJ, of course it is, but not for an MBBS student. So if you want to rather read by yourself and not rely on the read Harrison series, I would say go ahead with Davidson or API. API is a beautifully written textbook, which is in terms of information, it has almost 70% of the information that is there in the Harrison, which is more, more, more than enough for you to deal with your final prof as well as even the neat PG. And the language is very simple, unlike little complex language of the Western books. It's a very simple Indianized English, which you can easily understand. So choose a good source for reading. And then third, my third suggestion is always think 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 of clinical scenarios and management every time you have some free time let us say i have 15 minutes free time think of a clinical scenario sab sab dimag mein dimag mein hi banao ek scenario banao ki ha i got a patient with let us say chest pain अब मैं लाइक ये मैंने सिनेरियो बना लिया कि पेशेंट विद चेस्ट पेन अब मैं क्या करूंगा आगे आई विल आस्क द क्वेश्चन वेदर इट इज अक्यूट और क्रॉनिक वेदर इट वाज देयर फॉर मंथ्स टुगेदर और जस्ट स्टार्टेड फ्यू आवर्स और फ्यू मिनट्स बैक ओके तो इसका आंसर भी मैंने ही बना लिया दिमाग में ओके आई वुड अज्यूम दैट दिस पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड विद चेस्ट पेन ऑफ 30 मिनट्स जब पूछा कब से है ही सेड 30 मिनट्स गुड नाउ आई हैव टू आस्क और आई हैव टू डील विद दिस केस समवन प्रेजेंटिंग विद चेस्ट पेन फॉर 30 मिनट्स तो फिर क्या करूँ फिर पूछूंगा कि लोकेशन क्या है रिट्रोस्टर्नल है या लैटरलाइज है इफ इस रिट्रोस्टर्नल तो मेरे दिमाग में क्या क्या डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोस आना चाहिए हाँ एंजाइना हो सकता है इसोफेजियल परफोरेशन हो सकता है मेलरी वी एस ए बोरहेवस सिंड्रोम हो सकता है आयोटिक डिसेक्शन हो सकता है पेरिकार्डाइटिस हो सकता है जी आर डी हो सकता है दिज आर ऑल माई डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस अगर दिमाग में ये सब डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोस आ रहे हैं तो इनको डिफ्रेंशिएट करने के लिए मैं क्या और सवाल पूछ सकता हूँ अगर ये एंजाइना होगा तो ये एग्जर्शनल हो सकता है रेस्ट के बाद रिलीफ हो सकता है या नाइट्रेस लेने से रिलीफ हो सकता है सो आई विल आस्ट दिस डज दिस डज योर चेस्ट पेन गेट रिलीव विथ रेस्ट और डज इट गेट ट्रिगर्ड बाय एग्जर्शन हम अगर ये जीआरडी है या इसोफेजल इंजुरी की वजह से है देन फूड में हैव अ रिलेशनशिप विथ दिस फूड ट्रिगर द पेन ये पूछूंगा सब दिमाग में चल रहा है राइट आई एम जस्ट इमेजिनिंग एवरी बट बाई इमेजिनिंग दिस my brain is getting tuned to application of concepts application of approaches to different symptoms because patient ek traditional textbook description leke clinic mein kabhi nahi aayega if i see 10 patients of enteric fever maybe one will have this classical description rose spots everything remaining will not have that classical description so classical description mcq mein mil jayega i can deal with it बट नॉट इन रियल पेशेंट्स राइट दैट इज वेर वी फील अंडर कॉन्फिडेंट कि यार बुक में जो भी है ऐसा पेशेंट्स क्यों नहीं आते हैं नहीं आते हैं बट रेयर सो दैट्स वाई वी नीड टू लर्न एंड दैट लर्निंग हैपन्स बाई थिंकिंग अगेन एंड अगेन ऑन सीनारियोज राइट लेटर से दैट जो भी हमने चेस्ट पेन का सीनारियो थिंक किया था ना थिंकिंग के दिमाग में ही आंसर्स बनाते बनाते आई रीच द कंक्लूजन दैट दिस इज अनस्टेबल अनजाइना अभी अनस्टेबल अनजाइना है तो स्टेमी एन स्टेमी या सिंपल अनस्टेबल अनजाना हो सकता है नाउ टू डिफ्रेंशिएट आगे क्या करूंगा हाँ ई सी जी करूंगा प्रोपोनेंस करूंगा ओके लेटर से दैट माय इमेजिनरी माइंड इज नाउ टेकन मी टू द डायग्नोस ऑफ स्टेमी अब आगे क्या करना है तो नाउ आई विल अप्लाई कि हाँ स्टेमी मैनेजमेंट मैंने बुक से पढ़ा था या संतोष सर के वीडियो लेक्चर से पढ़ा था सो सर ने बचा बताया था कि बेस्ट ट्रीटमेंट फॉर स्टेमी इज एनजियो प्लास्टी चलो फिर एनजियो करते हैं देन अगेन माई इमेजिनरी माइंड से इज दैट नो हाउ इज दैट पॉसिबल आई मीन अ स्मॉल स्मॉल टाउन क्लिनिक तो अभी यहाँ पे एंजियोप्लास्टी करने के लिए ना कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट है ना क्या है तो क्या कर सकता हूँ हाँ रेफर करना है लेकिन रेफर करेंगे तो फिर हॉस्पिटल पहुँचते पहुँचते दैट कैथलैब पहुँचते पहुँचते चार पाँच घंटे निकल जाएंगे सो विजिट अ वाइज आइडिया फॉर मी टू रेफर नहीं तो फिर प्रोटोकॉल में क्या आता है प्रोटोकॉल से इज दैट इफ द फर्स्ट मेडिकल कॉन्टैक्ट टू दी एंजियो प्लास्टिक टाइम द बलून टाइम इज मोर देन वन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स तो मुझे थ्रॉम्बोलाइसिस करना पड़ता है हाँ तो इस सीनारी में मैं मुझे थ्रॉम्बोलाइस करना है इफ आई हैव टू थ्रॉम्बोलाइज What is the drug of choice? हाँ okay, altiplase is there, retiplase is there, tenecteplase is there. Okay, those क्या होगा? So from thinking, 
from someone presenting with chest pain, my thought process has taken me to pharmacology now. I have connected a lot of dots, right? This is what I called, I will call as thoughtful medicine. I will call this as thoughtful medicine. And you know what is the importance of this? A lot of science that we know today, like for example, that equation E equal to mc square and then <clears throat> fabric of space-time, possibility of time travel, all of that Einstein's contribution, they were all from the thought experiments. Einstein did not do many of his, most of his knowledge or whatever he has contributed to science did not come from the physical experiments. They came from the Dimagi experiment, the experiments he did in his mind. He called them as thought experiments and apply that to medicine and then see the difference. Just keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking scenarios. Many times you get stuck here, what do you want to do? Ask your senior resident, ask your assistant professors. Ask your colleagues, discuss among the friends about the scenarios. Ki haan, yahan pe stuck ho gaya. Abhi in dono condition mein differentiate karne ke liye kaun sa investigate karna padta hai? I don't know. They may have the answers. Next time when you encounter a similar case that you have already thought about, then you will know how beautifully the dots connect. And now you have developed an approach to complex cases as well. And that is how we become good clinicians. That's how we become confident clinicians. Right? Now, I classical textbook case. Nahi I can diagnose any case, any circumstance, any presentation if I have developed the approaches to cases. And what develop hoga by thinking of symptoms, presentations, and management. So, suggestion to be a confident clinician: read. Reading bina to possible nahi hai. So, read, read, read from the right source and once you have read no matter where you stand today keep thinking about scenarios and keep applying your knowledge and that enhances it like anything and i'm for this i'm not asking you to keep two hours for thought experiments no 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 what i'm saying is okay better him mess me 15 minute hoga for the food to get served i'll keep thinking from the college i'm going to the hostel uh, from the hospital i'm going to the hostel in the bus Minute time lagega. I'll keep thinking. Ek scenario ban jayega. Something new I will learn or somewhere I will get stuck. Phir Google nikala ya PW Medit ka app nikala ya chat GPT nikala and I asked the answers and I got the answers. Now this brain is going to remember it better and for long and you are going to apply it again next time when you encounter the similar scenario. Okay. Now the fourth suggestion to make sure that all that we learn is consolidated is attending bedside clinic. Because in the process of learning this approach, there comes the limitation of the physical skills. Ah, up, up to pata hai, agar mid diastolic murmur hoga, wo bhi apex pe hoga, to ye mitral stenosis ka hai. That I have learnt. But if I don't recognize that mid diastolic murmur, again I am going to be underconfident, right? Do not skip your bedside clinics, your bedside postings. Sincerely attend, attend, attend them. Learning the clinical skills is a lifelong process, but try to squeeze out maximum. Jitna ho sake utana and final BBS me. Uske baad me or jitna add ho sakta hai utana internship me. Keep squeezing. Fir PG me, fir senior residency me, fir your own clinical practice me. Keep squeezing. Jitna ho sakta hai utana skills. Seek te jo. Seek te jo. And when all these four steps are taken, trust me, you will be one of the very confident clinician and you can deal with most common disorders right after your MBBS. You don't need a PG degree. And again, I will tell you one more important thing. To become a successful surgeon, successful orthopedician, successful plastic surgeon, right, successful gynecologist or anything successful, if your foundational clinical skills are good, if you are a good MBBS doctor, then you will be a good physician, good pediatrician, good surgeon, good gynecologist, good oncologist, whatever it is. But be a good MBBS doctor first. Because you may get a seat in any of the institution and you may think, oh, I am now in AIMS. That will become a great obstetrician. But if your fundamentals are not good, if you all you have done is crammed MCQs and somehow with memory you got into AIMS, you will still be a mediocre doctor even with your AIMS degree. And someone who has done his MBBS quite good and then gotten into a peripheral institute may still be a better clinician. But trust me that, that it makes a lot of difference. Be a good MBBS doctor, 
by following these four steps that I am suggesting and that will help you to acquire the necessary attributes of a good clinician and then you will end up becoming a confident clinician and you can begin the journey right from your final MBBS or maybe if early possible like in your second MBBS even better and hopefully I will see the trend changing that over the next 10-15 years people would say that MBBS is good enough extra degree is an add-on instead of saying that MBBS is nothing and until and unless you have done MD you are as good as nobody I hope the trend see you soon guys